Hello, Shadow and Nesta speaking. Hey, it's Adam Carolla. Sorry I'm late. Adam, how you doing? Good. Good to talk to you. Yeah, good to talk to you. So we've been sitting here trying to figure out questions that we want to ask you. Because you're a man of many titles, let me see here <laughs> if I can get them all down. You are the most downloaded podcast in world history, according to Guinness. Sure, going way back to the turn of the century. <laughs> <laughs> Loveline, The Man Show, uh, The Adam Carolla Project, Home Improvement, The sure. Car Show, Dancing with the Stars, Celebrity Apprentice. I guess that's when we could start with, eh, Nesta? With the fight with Lou Ferrigno you had. Oh, yeah, we want to know about that. What the hell? Well, he was eyeballing me, so, uh, <laughs> and broke him down like kindling, you know? Uh, Lou, uh, well, Lou was, Lou was one of these guys who would, he, it's so funny, because you go on that show, and you go, all right, who's on our team? Like, uh, Lou Ferrigno, and you go, all right, there's a dude, that's a dude, dude, that's two-time Mr. Olympia, that's Lou, that's the Hulk, all right. And then they go, who else is on your show? Clay Aiken, oh, yeah. that puss. Oh, boy, I'm going to have to hear that Nancy boy whining the whole time. Lou was the biggest baby of the entire group, by far. How so? I, he just, he literally would say to me, like, he'd do a lot of, like, uh, you know, you have to do Lou, unfortunately. Okay. He, you know, I don't know why, because, look, if, if, if you're doing, uh, if you're going to do Cary Grant or John Wayne, you might as well do Lou for a go. Can you do it? Yeah, well, anyone can do it. You just have to do the deaf guy for it. <laughs> So he'd go like, there's one thing where it's like he had a shirt and he had his, I cut his sleeves off on his t-shirt and I go out and he's like, Adam, do you have a, uh, do you have the scissors? And I'm like, what? Can you give me another shirt and, and cut the sleeves off? And I said, why? What's wrong with the shirt you have? I just got your t-shirt. I cut the sleeves off. It's cold outside. I said, so you want to put another t-shirt over the t-shirt you're wearing? <laughs> yes. And I was like, what? Why do we have to do that? And he's like, because it's cold. And I'm like, yeah, but we're just taking a, another T-shirt and cutting the sleeves off. He did that to everybody in the van. <laughs> it's like, it's too cold. It's too hot. It's too hot. It's too cold. Turn the thing on. Like, he got a little cut on the end of his finger, and you'd think he was impaled on rebar. So in 50 years, we'll all be chicks, but Lou Ferrigno already is one. Is that what you're saying? I like the man, but I will put it to you this way. If you ask every single person on the male side, on Celebrity Apprentice, whatever the last season was, who's the biggest complainer out of the group, before you finish asking the question, they would say Lou. Every person would. So here's my question. Lou, Lou's answer would be everyone's insane. But I would ask Lou, Lou, how come this group of strangers all came together and the only thing they can agree on is that you're a whiner. <laughs> and I like Lou for it. No, I know it sounds like. Was geez. there anybody you actually hated on the show, like Imagine legitimately? If you didn't. No, uh, I I didn't stay there long enough to really <laughs> make any serious enemies. You're fired. But I liked all the people I, I worked with. Hey, I mean, what about I, Donald Trump? Is he a real big ass or is he a good guy? No, he's a medium-sized ass. <laughs> not that big. <laughs> he, no, he's, you know, I, I said this once, so let's say it again. I think you can judge a lot about a man by what his kids think of him, you know? Sure. I mean, and how they turned out. I mean, you can say you're the greatest guy in the world, and then you can tell me about your 29-year-old son who lives in Florida, and you guys haven't spoken in four years, and I'm going to show you a guy that is not such a great guy. You know what I mean? That's you know, fair. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of that. And, I, and I'll say this about Trump. Like I said, say what you will about the man. His kids adore him. And they're good. Like, they're good at what they do. Like, Ivanka is like this crazy, incredible, successful entrepreneur. She's amazing. Adam, do you know much about the city of Winnipeg? I know everything about Winnipeg. And I'll tell you why, because I heard the commercial that you've uh, got on for the show there November 30th at the Burton Cummings Theater, and you, you make the reference that the guess who, Burton Cummings. Oh, yeah, wrong you, guy. You see where I'm going with that? Yeah. Actually, no, it's not the wrong He's guy. Right. He's the Union yeah. Gap guy, right? No, no, you were right. You were good. Oh, the no, guess no, who? You, were, you were bang on with that, but uh, this city has got a bit of a, 
what I would call inferiority complex. Oh, in that, so like Toronto? Well, no, Toronto's got an incredible uh, megalomania complex. Uh, we're quite the opposite. What we've got going on here is if somebody spells our name wrong on CNN, as happened last night because of this big fireball we had in town, uh-huh. everybody starts losing their mind. Really? Yeah, yeah. And it's happened a couple times in the last three weeks where uh, some Winnipeg guy has been on a national, international TV show. They put us in the wrong province. The, you know, people don't know where we are. Yeah. 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 You guys should get over that because nobody cares, <laughs> which is kind of the ultimate slap in the face. No, that's kind of the, the, the point that we're taking. Is <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. But, you know, it is where we're at. Like, you know, I try to tell people all the time when they do those movies and they're talking about how the jocks beat me up every day because I was a nerd. I always go, that's incorrect, because I used to be a jock, and I hung out with jocks. Here's what jocks do. They don't know who you are, (laughs) which is much worse than them beating you up. They don't, they wouldn't, if you can go to your 10-year high school reunion, have the nerd walk up to the jock and go, remember me? And he'll go, no, I was too busy getting laid. And scoring touchdowns. I don't know who you are. Okay, we're going to go on live here, Adam, because uh, our timing is kind of awkward. We'll throw the rest of it up online. 92 City FM, World Class Rock. There's uh, two from Deep Purple, Space Trucking, and what was the other one? Smoke on the Water? That sounds right. Okay. Uh, Shadow and Nesta here, Backseat Drive 429. Live on the phone with us is Adam Carolla. We've already been talking to Adam for the past, uh, I don't know, five, seven, eight minutes about whatever. It feels like longer. It, yeah, I know. I get that same feeling. You're just talking about um, how Winnipeg has got this big inferiority complex if somebody should spell our name wrong. And uh, You pointed out that the ultimate slap in the face is that nobody really cares. No. And also, <laughs> you guys are kind of in the middle, right? I we mean, are right smack, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, you know, people go, where are we going, Vancouver? Or where are we going, to Toronto? And or Montreal, we're going to Montreal, and then it's like Winnipeg. See, it's for us who live in the states, it's easy to wrap our mind around Montreal because you go, ah, it's just on the other side, they're across from Buffalo or New York, it's right there, you know. Yeah. And then when you do Van, um, when you do Van, you, you do the you do the oh, it's down from Seattle, yeah, yeah so we're, we're really from- close to Grand Forks. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Yeah. That's well, the Minneapolis problem. isn't that far. It's five what hours about, away. What about Vancouver? That place thinks its poop doesn't stink, right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> Who's but, got a bigger attitude, Vancouver or Montreal? I would say Toronto. Totally Tur- different attitudes, though. Yeah. I mean, Vancouver really? just thinks they're cooler than the rest of us. Well, Vancouver is more important. They're all baked in Vancouver most so, of the time. You say that like it's a bad thing. But they're 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 like going like, hey man, we were talking to our cool friend Seattle, and we we're like hanging out, having some mimosas. Um, yeah, huh? do you have some friend in Minnesota or something yeah. with like a learning disability? Like they get to hang out with Seattle, basically. Yeah. Yes. yes. This is true. Um, so, oh, so Toronto's the worst. Oh, yeah. oh, for attitude, definitely. Yeah. yeah, interesting. I've been to Toronto. I, I was not a fan of their customs people. Oh, I don't think really anyone's ever a fan of any customs people, are they? Good. That's a good point. No one ever goes to like, oh man, I traveled through Mexico. Those guys do it. Bang up job. They do the best cavity search down there. I mean, if you really need somebody with a glove, you want to go to Mexico. I am. Uh, I would send a fruit basket to them if I didn't think it'd be sniffed out by a dog and thrown away. We're talking to Adam Carolla. What, what was the matter with the customs people in Toronto? What happened there? I think, actually, to be fair, it was Montreal. Okay. Many years ago, Jimmy Kimmel and I were going out there for something, and everyone said to me, "Don't just tell them you're not here on business." Tell them you're here on pleasure. And we were there on business to, like, sell the man show or something like that. And so they pulled me aside and they said, what are you here for? And I said, just pleasure. And then they pulled out this itinerary from my briefcase. And the itinerary had 200 places I had to be in, like, the next two days. You know, meetings with this and on, you know, doing this TV show and that radio show. And Very pleasurable. Pick you yeah. up at five in the morning and they're going to drop you off at this, you know, this industrial center. You know, and, and so they're like, this don't look like pleasure to me. This looks like business. And I said, um, well, listen, yeah, but I'm not getting paid. Is, well, I'm doing these shows and I'm promoting this stuff, but I'm not getting paid. So I don't look at it as business. 
And they said, what do you mean you're not getting paid? You do this radio show, you don't get paid? I said, no, you don't get paid when you do those shows. I said, look, when, when Michael J. Fox comes to our country and he does uh, The Tonight Show, he doesn't get paid to do The Tonight Show. He, he's promoting his movie. And the woman said, who's Michael J. Fox? Oh, my God. And I said, are you we immediately switched topics. <laughs> I was like, now now I'm on you, baby. Hello. This hey, is listen. Canada's greatest, you know, who, it'd be like saying, who's Alan Thick? Who, who's Alan Thick? Oh, come on, growing pains. Okay, so. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. you're, wow. Still, you're still tight with uh, Kimmel? Yeah. Just, uh, I, I'm actually driving his kid's car as we speak. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting a car in a week, but I had to borrow his kid's car. For so he, he's so, getting married next week, is he? Kimmel? No, it's no. not next week. It's, it's coming up, but yeah. But he's also got Axel Rose. First TV interview in 20 years Axel Rose is going to do. It's going to be with Kimmel. How does it got pulled oh, something like that, that? When did that happen? Today it was, well, it was announced. It hasn't happened yet. Oh, yeah. I know it hasn't happened, but I mean, when, when was it announced today? Yeah. yeah. I'm expecting Jeez. he'll probably, you know, not show up or have a lot of hamburgers there when he does. Walk off halfway through. Yeah. That is interesting. Some sort of axleness now going down. Wow. Here's a question, you know, just because I'm a lady and I will ask. So Kimmel's fiance, she's one of the head writers on his show. What did she think about your whole comment about women not being as funny as guys? We're to put a guy on the spot like oh, that. Oh, totally Molly, am. yeah. She's uh incredibly nice person who <laughs> really doesn't like busting chops, although Jimmy told me that, uh, you know, it wasn't making things easier for him, mm -hmm. uh, such comments. <laughs> but, uh, there may have been a discussion that went on in the privacy of their bedroom about you. Well, I'm sure there may have been. Not maybe the one you were hoping for? Yeah. Well, she, I'm friends with her, and I, she's great. Like, she's a really... Smart, really funny, and really everything. So I don't, I don't think she feels too particularly challenged by those kind of statements. <laughs> but um, yeah, I went over there a couple of weeks ago to work on the Emmy stuff. Just on a Sunday night, I just came by, mm -hmm. and we just sat there, and I, with the three of us sat around. She, she, me, and him, just sort of talking about the monologue and the jokes and the Emmy stuff. And then I went did the Emmys uh, last weekend with him or the weekend before and went to the after party and all that stuff. So her and I her and I have hung out for a long time and she didn't particularly have any beef over it. <laughs> Although I'm sure if you gave her two beers she'd tell you what a douchebag. You douche strike me was, as a guy though that either your friends, wives, girlfriends, whatever, would either really think you're an awesome dude or completely hate your no, guts. Here's and never a guy I get the impression yeah. here's a guy that, that could say the most ridiculous thing in the world or insulting, but because of the way he says it, you don't take it that way. Oh, look it's at that. A very, I think you're charming. It's a very good delivery you have there, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Again, maybe to, maybe much like Winnipeg is that people just don't care. Uh. <laughs> hey, listen, we got a blast pretty soon here because you know what program directors are like. Play sure. the songs! Sure. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, we, we, we need... It's been nine minutes since we've heard BTO on your stage. We'll get on let's it. Yeah, his show's coming going. up November 30th, Burton Cummings Theater. Uh, tickets are available online and all the details at 92cityfm.com. Can, can you tell us briefly what it is you're going to give us? And oh. Somebody wanted to know if there's going to be a wheel. Well, yeah. No. You're going to get, <laughs> um, besides crabs, you're going to get laughter and uh, a, a, an evening with Adam Carolla. A, a, uh, Stand-up, storytelling, some inspirational moments, but it'll be basically an evening with, with Adam Carolla. So like a one-man show meets a stand-up show meets a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, the PowerPoint totally sold me. Yeah, that's what got you in, right? Every time, I'm a sucker for a good PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we done? Yes. Adam, thank you for taking the time, my friend. Thanks for taking the time on your side. We will uh, see you in about a month and a half. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Adam Carolla. <laughs> you know what? I didn't know what to expect. I think he's funny. And you guys get to hear all of that interview in its entirety. Where are we going to put that? We the will web? put it up on 92cityfm.ca. Okay. Very, very mm. soon. It's 437. Back to the tunes. Two from the trues after this. Ooh.